I'm here. This one's kind of special for me. This is my very first visit to the Qualcomm campus, kind of a, a pilgrimage for any tech nerd like myself. And we're here for a very specific reason, getting a little bit more hands-on, a little bit closer look at the new X Elite chip, the Snapdragon X Elite. Quick disclaimer out of the way, uh, Qualcomm was very kind to cover my travel and accommodations, my, uh, my train ride down here to San Diego, and then also put me up in a hotel. But there's been no influence from their PR. There's been no requests for any kind of specific coverage. These are all just my thoughts, especially as we're looking at what could be a revolution in portable computing. I think we've all been waiting for something to happen on the window side of the laptop conversation. Better performance per watt, longer battery life, and maybe some thinner and sleeker designs that don't rely on the same kind of uh, fans or cooling that a lot of our current Windows laptops uh, require. And this is where X Elite is becoming such an interesting part of this conversation. But throughout all of my demos and throughout all of these experiences, I've been left with a few more questions than answers. This was a really special trip for me because I've never gotten a chance to see Qualcomm's main campus and we got like a full tour. We got to see the Qualcomm Museum, a uh, history of devices, many of which I have owned in my gadget review history. And uh, we also got a, a sneak peek, kind of a peek behind the curtain at some of the research and development, one of the engineering rooms where uh, X Elite is being tested and that's where Qualcomm is working with Microsoft and with some of their OEM partners to make sure that all of the additional features and uh, Windows authentication, biometric security, thermal uh, performance, everything is on point before these laptops start shipping to consumers. And I think stuff like this is really cool. I won't spend too much of this video talking about their connected car platform. I have to make a separate video about this later on, but we got to sit inside the cockpit, some of the stuff they were showing off at CES this year and how proud they are of the work they're doing in the automotive industry. But if you're watching this video, and especially from what I titled this video, I know you're here to talk about Windows on ARM, new laptops coming out, and the Snapdragon X Elite. A lot of what we had access to today is very similar to the uh, benchmarking and the performance data, some of the early uh, press releases that Qualcomm has already put out for the X Elite. But getting, getting a little closer and getting to see some of these demonstrations in person, it was like the next little baby step. Uh, and again, I, I'm using words like expectation. Qualcomm has a certain tier of expectations and we've seen that reflected in some of their marketing materials. We're talking about a processor that can go into a variety of different uh, devices and form factors and is built to operate within a very wide envelope of uh, different uh, tiers of power, how much juice it's pulling. But this is one of the things that's still a little tricky to untangle. And talking to a lot of the Qualcomm representatives that we saw today, still couldn't get a good handle on how we're rating different parts and pieces of the experience. Qualcomm saying this is a 24 watt uh, device. Well, they mean the entire system power draw, including you know the uh, the, the display. We don't often talk about uh, processors in that way. I mean, we talk about an Intel part having a certain TDP. You know, it's pulling certain wattage from a, a laptop battery, or it needs to be plugged into an outlet. We're we're kind of focused on just what is that one part doing? What is that one component responsible for? So Qualcomm is approaching this more from their history of mobile devices, of tablets and smartphones, where you have to take the entire system power draw into consideration: the screen and and the battery and how everything charges up and how hot it might. I get. It's a it's a slightly different way of considering the the performance per watt, the entire system holistically in that sense. I don't think anyone would be terribly surprised that uh, Qualcomm was was really anxious to show off a bunch of tests that made their products look good. And we got those sort of uh, the, the repeat, we got to see them live as demonstrations, uh, Geekbench score, uh, Cinebench, how much more it was outperforming a newer, more comparable uh, Intel part in a system kind of designed to go head to head with an Intel based thin and light notebook. But as we're going around that product demo room and we're looking at all these different aspects of how the X Elite is supposed to perform, one of the things that I thought was telling all of their demo systems, these are configured uh, uh, test bed systems from Qualcomm to show off the X Elite. All of those systems were operating in the idea that this was gonna be more of the 24 watt system. So the lower powered system, Qualcomm wasn't trying to impress us with 
the most expensive and the most powerful versions of what an X-Elite powered system might look like. Uh, neither Qualcomm nor uh, the folks at DaVinci, the, uh, making uh, DaVinci Resolve, are ready to show off the, the newer version of DaVinci that's going to support ARM processors for Windows. But, you know, we still saw a lot of those uh, NPU, you know, anything that was AI or neural core language, language learning models, and how much faster our ARM versions are at this kind of processing, because in all of our mobile devices, we've been working uh, AI, on-device AI uh, software, for years now. And so uh, you, you see that going head to head. It's not too surprising that uh, this is a situation where I think Intel and AMD have kind of fallen behind in this neural core uh, capability. So when we see uh, a mask tool in DaVinci Resolve, and this isn't a fully optimized version of DaVinci Resolve, but it loves digging into those little MPUs, those little neural cores, and it, you know, performance is double what we can see with a comparable Intel part. If laptop manufacturers really can deliver on consumer facing machines at lower and lower power tiers, you know, how much battery, how much juice the system needs to pull, a 24 watt system, I mean, that's not too far removed from like a, a mid-ranger to a premium uh, tablet, consumer facing tablet, but we're seeing performance scores that are outpacing some of the thirstier Intel systems out there. Qualcomm representatives are taking great pains not to say that this is gonna jump right out of the gate as a high-end desktop solution or a premium tier gaming experience if, if you're you know, into building your own gaming PC, I don't think that's going away anytime soon. What we're looking at is a really disruptive performance per watt, something that can uh, achieve much higher performance scores, but you can run a laptop out in the field for re a really long time. But gaming as part of the situation is still a really interesting, uh, is in a really interesting place for what Qualcomm is trying to achieve. Seeing product demos on a thin and light notebook, which again, Qualcomm says the entire system is rated to operate at around 20 to 24 watts and is capable of playing Baldur's Gate at roughly 30 frames per second in 1080p. It's something like even a Steam Deck can't really accomplish to the same degree, at least not as well. So th this isn't going to be a, the, the transition where I feel like uh, we immediately all dump x86 and you're not going to have to worry about having you know NVIDIA graphics cards in your laptops anymore. But we're already getting these little glimpses and taking these next little steps into what Qualcomm uh, helping to set expectations, you know, where, where this might be able to go. And it's highly dependent on each company that's making the laptop to kind of build the experience around the X Elite. The X Elite's gonna be this kind of common point and then what determines a more expensive system from a less expensive system is gonna be everything that surrounds that part. So that's what has me really excited, but also a little anxious. This is only one small part, uh, one part of the recipe of what might move Windows mobile computing into a new phase, a new generation. And, and I think Qualcomm is setting the correct expectations on what their, their first offering in this new space is going to look like with their own Orion cores and walking away from ARM reference designs. But this also means we're still in that wait and see period. What are manufacturers going to do with these components when they finally have access to them and they can put them together into systems that consumers can buy? What does this mean for a Microsoft? What does this mean for a Dell, an Asus, a Lenovo, or a Samsung? And of course, Qualcomm has been playing in this space for a couple of years now. I love showing off my Robo Incala, that 8CX Gen 3 chip, but uh, this also sets up that other down the road concern is uh, we don't want to make this too complicated for consumers to grog. We want to have some standardized conversation or some expectation of future performance. And that it, you know, when other companies make it into the space, rumors of AMD or Nvidia or a company like MediaTek also now trying to join a Windows on ARM conversation after Qualcomm has kind of paved this trail for them. How do we delineate those differences? How do we properly educate consumers and make sure that people are getting the right fit solutions for their needs? Those are all the questions that still kind of need to come. The answers that we need to look for as we get more of this competition out into the sector. And then also hopeful, uh, hoping that developers jump on board and really craft meaningful experiences for all of this hardware. So unfortunately, I can't just uh, blow open all the doors and tell you all of these things about how this system, these systems might 
might compare to traditional x86 and what exactly what software will be you know compatible it is interesting still that this is like yet the next step on the journey in this discussion in this conversation getting to see these uh, tests these demonstrations and some of these benchmarks result benchmarking results firsthand so i am i am encouraged uh, again uh, removed from a powerpoint presentation or just like a a series of of uh, slides shown off at like a ces getting a little bit more hands-on a little bit more access a bit more of a peek behind the curtain i feel like the qualcomm side of this uh, conversation is in good hands they are delivering a part with a certain expectation of performance and and power draw and now the next step is moving this part into other industry into other areas of the consumer manufacturing landscape and hopefully this enables a whole series of new form factors of new all-in-one systems mini and portable desktops things that can uh, really help consumers land the right fit for their needs but it still leaves me with a little touch of that anxiety that we are properly communicating and educating consumers as to what these systems are trying to accomplish where they're going to fit into someone's workflow and that we're getting the entire package in place that we're, we're offering the right tools to the right engineers the right developers and the right manufacturers so that we can all make the the best use of this new part but above all else, it's just one of those really fun situations where you're getting to meet uh, product developers and you're getting to meet engineers and you're getting to meet PR folks. And it's always nice when there is that sense of excitement. It, it, there's something in the air and something that feels like it's happening, something that, that we've been waiting for in this space where portable x86 Windows computing for a couple years now has felt like I mean, kind of in a holding pattern and a lot of consumers and a lot of businesses are ready for what comes next. And in speaking with the folks here at Qualcomm, they feel they have the solution for what comes next. And there's definitely an air of that excitement, of that energy of moving forward in this industry. So another huge thank you to Qualcomm for helping to get me down here and giving me the tour and for uh, giving me access to these products and to these demos. Getting to play around with this stuff firsthand has definitely helped. Um, sort of illuminate or better position some of the comparisons that we're going to start working when real products are shipping out to consumers, like really getting an understanding of how to talk about this stuff so that then we can share these experiences with all of you fine folks at home. There's gonna be so much more to cover in the weeks and months ahead. I genuinely feel like this is gonna be one of the most exciting tech conversations of 2024 and the potential to really disrupt some of the, the entrenched uh, computer and laptop market. I think we've all been ready for that. So uh, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately, absolutely amazing. Those of you clicking on links and visiting my home site and catching my Patreon, patreon.com slash some gadget guy. Literally none of my videos would be capable or possible without the support of this amazing community of tech pals. Uh, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy basically everywhere, but these days spending a bit more time on the map Mastodons, a little less so on the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and definitely not on the Twitters. And I will catch you all on the next video.